G'day mate, Forty here on the Manly Fast Ferry. All right, we're getting ready to rocket over to Manly from Circular Quay, which is uh, by the Sydney Opera House. Uh, there's, the, there's the Opera House. Here we go. So, fast ferry takes about uh, 14 minutes, regular ferry takes about 24. And we're off. Just love being on Sydney Harbour. How could you have a negative view of life when you're in a place like this? It's funny, I brought my, my laptop with me and there's this tiny pinprick of light which is just bugging me. So. When I watch shows on my laptop, like I like to chill out at the end of the day, you know, I'm walking about 10 miles a day. Oh, Phyllis Carlisle, influential talent manager and producer. I interviewed her. Okay, she, she just died. So I did, uh, did a book with about 60 interviews of Hollywood uh, producers and uh, she, she was one of them. Uh, she started out as a casting director, so most of the producers I interviewed, they started out as lawyers. So she managed the careers of William Defoe, Gina Davis, Melanie Griffith, Andy Garcia, John Malkovic. She produced films including Seven and The Accidental Tourist. She was just a great interview. Just so raw. And uh, she says, Ayn Rand said something once in a book that stayed with me my whole life. You know everything you need to know about somebody in the first 30 seconds, and you spend the rest of the time you know them learning that you were right. So first producing credit was on The Accidental Tourist. Remember that movie from 1988? Okay. She was a great interview, just uh, really frank. So I talked to her around 2003. looking through my, my Apple iPhone and uh, it had this article on nine phrases you can use to brighten someone's day. I really wanted to share this with you because I brighten someone's day had just the perfect article to accompany some video of uh, Sydney Harbour. Okay, so having purpose in life is associated with greater life satisfaction and better health, right? So here we go. Use these nine little phrases to instantly brighten someone's day. But I think what's more important than the words is your state, right? If you're a gloomy Gus and you're using these phrases to brighten someone's day, I don't think they're going to be terribly brightening. But it's true, we do underestimate how happy we can make other people, particularly when we give them a compliment. So, say, I am proud of you. Yeah. So, you can use this for big achievements like a promotion or a graduation, but there are all sorts of little things. When people make progress, when they try something for the first time, when they demonstrate good character, right? You can say, I'm proud of you. 
Another one is, I see your gifts. I remember in my days as a worker, like how much it would mean to me at times when I was struggling that uh, someone would you know, appreciate me and uh, see my gifts. Tell me more about that. Right? Ask people to tell you more about their interests, feelings, and experiences. Find out what's important to them. Ask them to elaborate on their experiences. Invite them to go deeper. Share their perspective. Tell me more about how you interpreted that feedback. Right, so here's the picture. Tell someone, you know, there's someone, and then there's someone after you tell them, I love you as you are. I just feel lucky you're on our team. I admire you. I love spending time with you. I am grateful for you. The expressions of gratitude start a positive upward cycle. Thank you for cooking dinner. I'm grateful for your insightful comments in that meeting. Thank you for a great phone call. And you are making a difference. Right? Remind people the ripple effect of their actions. Point out how their work accumulates to make a bigger impact on the world. You inspire me. And the way you show up for your friends and your family. It's made me think about how I can be a better friend. You can do this. Right? We've all struggled with gaining confidence. So uh, there's someone close to me who my father would inspire and helped her get through law school. They kept telling her, you can do this, you can do this. Help them to reframe the obstacle into a challenge. Point out a recent win. Remind them of past successes. And you changed my life. Think about someone who's had an impact on your life, but who you never properly thanked. Okay, want to sound and feel more confident? Ditch these 11 phrases from your vocabulary, say psychologists. People who are good at small talk always avoid these seven mistakes. All right, I want to go for that one. Assuming that nobody wants to talk to you. Yeah, I've often gotten into that kind of slump. Right, I'm out and about just feeling awkward in a social interaction and I just assume that no one wants to talk to me. Interrupting or intruding upon an existing conversation, I have done that a lot. Start talking without having something to say. Broaching controversial topics. Being hard to follow. Talking too much about yourself or about the other person. Nobody likes to feel interrogated. Man, I've done that a lot. If you sense that your questions aren't welcome, back off. Yeah, this is something I need to hear. Instead, tell a story, offer an opinion. Otherwise, relieve them of the burden of performance. Wasting someone's time. Okay. Don't stare at the floor, look over their shoulder, put your phone away, be present. Okay, 11 common grammar mistakes that make people cringe. Yeah, I didn't realize there was all this good stuff on CNBC. Oh, it was funny. On, uh, on Twitter, I have a an acquaintance, like an online friend, who routinely sends me about you know 20 messages a day on Twitter, and uh, I, I enjoy looking through them. I, I respond when it's you know something that uh, speaks to me. Uh, so yesterday, after getting you know the latest batch of 20 messages that I didn't respond to, I suddenly find I'm blocked. <laughs> How bizarre is that? Like you have a friend who's like sending you, or online friend I've never met, you know, sending you all these pictures of himself and you know all the places he's going, which is fine, you know, like there's a lot of, you know, there's some good quality content in there and boom, you get blocked. Okay, 11 extremely common grammar mistakes that make people cringe. Okay, apostrophes in the wrong place. Unnecessary apostrophes. Okay, every day is one word, it's two days. 
confusing I me. So the manager told Riley and I should be the manager told Riley and me. It's versus IT apostrophe S, of course, less or fewer. So fewer is for numbers, less is for things that can't be counted. Use less with numbers when they are a single or a total unit that measures distance, amount, or time. And less than 30% of us bothered learning these rules. Lie or lay. I could just lay down and go to sleep. Wrong. I could just lie down and go to sleep. So to lie is intransitive, which means it doesn't have an object and doesn't do anything to anyone or anything else. To lay is transitive, which means it does have an object. Okay, I get this wrong. So it's some thing or someone the verb is doing something to someone I lay down my head so you can say I lay myself down confusing loose with lose all right that's obvious that and who the people that reach their sales target will get a reward right? the people who reach then versus then Use then, T-H-E-N, when you're talking about time. And use then when you're comparing things. Okay, there is a location. T-H-E-Y apostrophe R-E is a contraction, and T-H-E-I-R is a possession, is a possessive, meaning ownership. You and your. Okay. Most of these are pretty dumb. Getting closer to manly. So, do you get anxious about traveling? I know I do, but it's a lot better when you have friends right, and community. Like when there's a synagogue that you can go to, or if you go to a church or a mosque or whatever your community is, there's a there's a community there. Wherever you're going, it makes everything so much easier. Friends, community, they teach you how to navigate you know, new surroundings. And normally I can travel all around Sydney for just like a dollar a day. But uh, I didn't realize the fast manly ferry costs $10.50 Australian. So if this was a regular ferry, it cost me nothing. And now I'm out. Seven dollars American. Live and learn. And this fast ferry has not been particularly fast. And mainly is North Sydney. It's got the second most famous beach in Sydney after Bondi. So I'm just scrolling through Apple's News Plus, $10 a month. And you get subscriptions essentially to 100 different magazines. I was so excited this morning when Australia got an opening goal on France, went up one nil till France answered in the 26th minute, then kicked three more goals to win going away 4-1. Just like I was so excited when the USA got an early goal over Wales and then surrendered a late goal for a tie. What everyone gets wrong about protein. Man, I regret my lifetime as a vegetarian. A lot of people have ill effects from being vegetarian. It really wrecked my health. So here's a story. When, when Kerry Forrest's steak arrived in the spring of 2014, she looked around nervously. She had a vegan blog right, with a very successful app. She had a master's degree in nutrition. She ate plenty of beans and soy for protein, yet she was exhausted. She'd been low energy for months. 
ever since she'd switched to being vegan in 2010, inspired by the actress Alicia Silverstone and her love of animals, and the hope that she'd give up those stubborn five pounds that kept coming back. And she realized this isn't working. I felt ashamed. This is my health, I have to make a change. So she re searched for words how to tell her audience. June 14, 2014, she had published on why I'm no longer vegan. And in hours she had hundreds of negative comments, such as no true vegan would ever listen to their body and eat animal products. She got bad reviews of her app on the App Store. So many people unsubscribed from her email list, she received an auto email from MailChimp saying her account had been suspended because the company was afraid she'd been hacked. She was alone except for a husband and a therapist. But she held on eating beef and chicken, steak. Then two years later, the first email came from a negative commenter saying she too had given up being vegan and apologized. Emails began to trickle in, then turned into a small, steady stream. Then she, she published a post how to reintroduce meat after being vegan or vegetarian. So many people think a high protein diet causes kidney problems in healthy adults. Not true, says this article in Women's Health. 